All right, thank you. So I'm not Fatma Akbulut. Uh, uh, I'm presenting this talk on behalf of our collaboration with her. She could not attend due to uh, visa issues. Uh, so I will give the talk uh, on her behalf. So the title of the talk is Estimation of Beat to Beat Interval from Wearable Photoplethysmography Sensor on Different Measurement Sites During Daily Activities. Uh, the author list is shown here. Uh, this is the outline of my talk. Uh, I'll provide an introduction and motivation, give some background, uh, the objectives, talk about our proposed method, and then really focus on the experimental results and what it uh, implies for uh, wearable uh, PPG devices. So um, the basic goal is we want to build a wearable system for physiological monitoring. Uh, and uh, both electrocardiogram and photoplethysmogram are used widely to measure uh, the heart rate and the respiration as well. Um, but accuracy is really critical here, and right now uh, uh, PPG devices are suffering from accuracy based on different kinds of noise involved in the system. And so our goal is to really develop an algorithm that detects the beat-to-beat -beat, uh, intervals of PPG uh, and also, the second objective is to uh, understand uh, the, the impact of location. Our unique uh, approach in this regard, as I'll show you in the talk, is uh, using filtering to get rid of a lot of the noise, uh, both high frequency and slow varying noise, and also to uh, use segmentation, adapt adaptive segmentation, based on some, some work that was published recently. Um, specifically uh, Taro in uh, reference uh, 7 in our paper. And uh, we also validated our measurements with the uh, ECG data that was placed uh, at the same time on the body. <clears throat> uh, so the existing algorithms are not uh, as useful or may fail when there's excessive motion. And what we'd like to show is that in our algorithms, using the same sensor platform, uh, the, uh, the algorithms are more motion resistant. All right, so uh, a key uh, validation point of what we're doing is to uh, use real-time ECG uh, and also uh, validate that with PPG. Um, as you know, ECG sensors are, are used to measure different kinds of biopotentials as the heart contracts and expands, and it is really the golden standard. Um, but as we go to other parts of the body, such as the wrist, and use other technologies like PPG, which are typically optically based, uh, there is quite a bit of noise. Um, but again, the advantage is that there's no sticky electrode needed, and so we really, our goal is to come up with a solid algorithm for PPG. All right, so here in a nutshell is the goal again. Uh, we want to find uh, the best location for uh, photo uh, plasmatogram on different sides of the body, and we also want to implement a new algorithm that accurately processes the PPG data. And we are doing this study using a commercially available Empatica E4 wristband PPG. We're comparing our developed algorithm with their existing algorithms uh, and looking at the accuracy and uh, location uh, performance. So our beat-to-beat -beat interval detection algorithm uh, has three parts. Uh, the first part is pre-processing of uh, the PPG signal. Um, and I'll talk about each of these parts uh, in the next few slides. Uh, the second part involves segmentation intervaling of the, of the PPG six signals with spectrograms. And the third one is to find the characteristic point and interbeat interval from those points. Uh, as you can see from this plot, a typical PPG signal will have some max, minimum and maximum points. The systolic points shown here represent the beat-to-beat -beat variation. But typically, because of noise, these are hard to detect. The first der derivative of this signal can give us maximum points, but sometimes there are a number of different maximum points, depending on the noise in the original PPG. Uh, and then once this data can be cleaned up, then we can take the second derivative and get a distolic point, uh, which then better represents the heart beat-to-beat -beat interval uh, that we're after. All right, so the proposed method, uh, the step one for the proposed method is pre-processing. Um, so as uh, I mentioned before, the PPG signal has two components. It has an AC component, 
uh, where the signal is varying, as you can see here. And then it has a DC component uh, that uh, can change over time depending on the, uh, the, the noise in the system, uh, depending on deep breaths, for example, um, muscle movements, and, oops, and even ca uh, cable noise. So uh, the PPG signal, which is non-stationary and carries uh, the DC content along with this AC content, needs to be smoothened out. So uh, as a first step, it is, uh, uh, we remove a lot of the noise using uh, Bessel filtering. Uh, we use a high remove the high-frequency noise uh, and then also then remove some of the, un uh, uh, the unwanted low-frequency noise. The details of this algorithm or this step are provided in the paper. Um, and the re net result of this is a raw PPG signal that may look like this with our noise removal and pre-processing looks fairly clean shown down here. Um, so the uh, XD is the detrended, all the uh, trending is removed, the XD signal is obtained by the raw signal and the uh, variance and the mean, uh, uh, taking into account the variance and the mean and then uh, involving this equation to get uh, the detrended uh, EPG signal shown here. So, uh, the second step is the segmentation interval of the PPG signal. Um, it is uh, presumed, based on the literature, that the spectral content of a typical PPG will range typically between half a hertz to three hertz. So uh, we apply the fast Fourier transformation uh, in the 30-second window, um, and um, uh, this has an overlap of about 50%, and uh, we can then convert into a spectral density, and looking at the first few peaks of this, obtain information about characteristic points such as the systolic point or the diastolic point, diastolic point. Once we do this analysis, we can then find the interbeat interval. Uh, as I mentioned, the PPG signal is differentiated twice after removing some of the noise and applying the segmentation. Uh, the interbeat interval IBI was uh, calculated by analyzing the points of interest in those three uh, curves that I showed earlier. Um, the uh, equation that's this PT is the, the, beat to, the uh, interbeat interval. It depends on the sampling frequency, which in our case is 64 hertz, the distance between the peaks, and the number of total points. Uh, L is the number of peaks, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, this leads to the calculation of, uh, of the uh, IBI. So we want to see how this algorithm compares to a gold standard, which is ECG. And so we compared the PP, uh, PPG variation to uh, a real-time R to R variation from ECG uh, using our new algorithm. And um, we find that uh, there's quite a bit of accuracy involved uh, uh, between um, the PPG and the R to R. So this indicates that uh, pulse rate uh, variability can be related to heart rate variability. So once we have, uh, once we invoke this algorithm and, and uh, obtain respectable accuracy results, we wanted to put it on different parts of the human body and see uh, really where is the best uh, PPG performance uh, coming from. And so uh, these are the different locations. We put it on the wrist, uh, on the finger, uh, on the ear, on the arm, and on the ankle. And not shown here is the ECG measurement on the chest that was happening at the same time. And you can see the, the different kinds of signals that are coming out from the different locations, some of them definitely more noisy than others. Uh, and so um, and the ECG signal, I should say, it was uh, developed by the ASSIST Center, and that's being used as a control here. Um, the measurements were done for two and a half minutes, uh, again, at the same sampling frequency as was used in developing uh, this algorithm. So the results are now uh, shown here. Um, we are comparing the uh, different locations uh, of the location of the PBG, comparing our B2B uh, int algorithm with the commercially available Empatica algorithm. Uh, I should say that the Empatica algorithm um, gives an average uh, B2B interval, um, but when you want to look at instantaneous uh, intervals, sometimes because of the noise, it just throws out the data. 
So it's good for measuring averages, but not good for uh, instant beat to beat intervals. And that's one of our objectives here is to look at uh, instant beat uh, uh, to beat interval. So in this uh, regard, uh, comparing and the underneath the number here, the mean square error uh, is a standard deviation. And um, uh, that is uh, uh, the, the, so the B2B interval here, and the Empatica's inter, uh, uh, results are here. And the number down here shows the error between the PPG measurements and the gold standard ECG. And so the lower the number, uh, the better the performance. And so a few conclusions here in that regard. Um, first of all, both the uh, in the resting state, uh, the uh, uh, beat to beat interval algorithm does a much better job on the finger and the arm compared to the uh, compared to the corresponding uh, Empatica algorithms. Uh, you can see these numbers are quite uh, respectable. Uh, and that's the resting state. In the walking state, this algorithm also outperforms the uh, commercial algorithm. Uh, because uh, we do a, a more involved study in removing the noise uh, by segmenting it and be able to get better uh, beat to beat intervals over, over uh, the entire period versus the average. Interestingly also, um, in this case of speaking, which is sometimes an interesting modality to explore, the BPG location on the arm also did quite well. So in general, P uh, our PP uh, B2B end shows higher degree of accuracy and the PPG signal acquired from the arm seems to be the best location um, uh, when the person is uh, uh, in different kinds of motion. So in conclusion, uh, our uh, B2B int algorithm is effective in reducing the slow varying periodic motion artifacts from PPG. Uh, we were able to validate its uh, accuracy by, um, or we made the measurements and, and developed the, al the algorithm using the Empatica E4 wristband and validated it using ECG. Uh, the average mean square error from three different activities, uh, such as resting, speaking, and walking, are shown in the parentheses. And we interestingly, we found that one of the better locations for PPG is the upper arm, uh, which also could be a good location for um, energy harvesting, uh, which is another one of our objectives. So this work was funded by the National Science Foundation Nanosystems Engineering Research Center um, called the ASSIST Center. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you and see if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, I'm for the questions.